Top Quotes from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. If physical death is the price that I must pay to free my white brothers and sisters from a permanent death of the spirit, then nothing can be more redemptive. The time is always right to do what is right. A nation or civilization that continues to produce soft-minded men purchases its own spiritual death on the installment plan. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. Only in the darkness can you see the stars. You can kill the dreamer, but you can't kill the dream. We are not makers of history. We are made by history. I have a dream that one day right there in Alabama little black boys and little black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. Nonviolence demands that the means we use must be as pure as the ends we seek. One day we will learn that the heart can never be totally right when the head is totally wrong. We must walk on in the days ahead with an audacious faith in the future. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? We must use time creatively, in the knowledge that the time is always ripe to do right. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. No one really knows why they are alive until they know what they die for. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be a sun, be a star. For it isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best of whatever you are. Whatever affects one directly, affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. If you can't fly then run, if you can't run then walk, if you can't walk then crawl, but whatever you do you have to keep moving forward. For when people get caught up with that which is right and they are willing to sacrifice for it, there is no stopping point short of victory. If I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. We may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. We must learn that passively to accept an unjust system is to cooperate with that system, and thereby to become a participant in its evil. The difference between a dreamer and a visionary is that a dreamer has his eyes closed and a visionary has his eyes open. You will change your mind, you will change your looks, you will change your smile, laugh, and ways but no matter what you change, you will always be you. Everything that we see is a shadow cast by that which we do not see. The art of acceptance is the art of making someone who has just done you a small favor wish that he might have done you a greater one. When you are right you cannot be too radical, when you are wrong, you cannot be too conservative. Every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Courage is the power of the mind to overcome fear. 
A man who won't die for something is not fit to live. Courage is an inner resolution to go forward despite obstacles. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. We must build dikes of courage to hold back the flood of fear. Never, never be afraid to do what's right, especially if the well-being of a person or animal is at stake. Society's punishments are small compared to the wounds we inflict on our soul when we look the other way. There is nothing more majestic than the determined courage of individuals willing to suffer and sacrifice for their freedom and dignity. Courageous men never lose the zest for living even though their life situation is zestless. Cowardly men, overwhelmed by the uncertainties of life, lose the will to live. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Hatred paralyzes life, love releases it. Hatred confuses life, love harmonizes it. Hatred darkens life, love illuminates it. There can be no deep disappointment where there is not deep love. It may be true that the law cannot make a man love me, but it can keep him from lynching me, and I think that's pretty important. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. I know that love is ultimately the only answer to mankind's problems. Man must evolve for all human conflict a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. Hate is just as injurious to the hater as it is to the hated. Like unchecked cancer, hate corrodes the personality and eats away its vital unity. Many of our inner conflicts are rooted in hate. Love is the greatest force in the universe. It is the heartbeat of the moral cosmos. He who loves is a participant in the being of God. You know, a lot of people don't love themselves. And they go through life with deep and haunting emotional conflicts. So the length of life means that you must love yourself. And you know what loving yourself also means? It means that you've got to accept yourself. Have we not come to such an impasse in the modern world that we must love our enemies, or else? The chain reaction of evil, hate begetting hate, wars producing more wars, must be broken, or else we shall be plunged into the dark abyss of annihilation. We shall match your capacity to inflict suffering by our capacity to endure suffering. We will meet your physical force with soul force. Do to us what you will. And we shall continue to love you. Those who are not looking for happiness are the most likely to find it because those who are searching forget that the surest way to be happy is to seek happiness for others. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil triumphant. We cannot walk alone. And as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. We cannot turn back. We are now faced with the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous and positive action. A right delayed is a right denied. A man dies when he refuses to stand up for that which is right. A man dies when he refuses to stand up for justice. A man dies when he refuses to take a stand for that which is true. The hope of a secure and livable world lies with disciplined nonconformists who are dedicated to justice, peace, and brotherhood. Everybody can be great, because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace. A soul generated by love. The first question which the priest and the Levite asked was, if I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But, the good Samaritan reversed the question, if I do not stop to help this man, what will happen to him? 
We are prone to judge success by the index of our salaries or the size of our automobiles rather than by the quality of our service and relationship to mankind. Whatever your life's work is, do it well. A man should do his job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn could do it no better. No work is insignificant. All labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence. Freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor, it must be demanded by the oppressed. Oppressed people cannot remain oppressed forever. The yearning for freedom eventually manifests itself. We must straighten our backs and work for our freedom. A man can't ride you unless your back is bent. The problem of racism, the problem of economic exploitation, and the problem of war are all tied together. These are the triple evils that are interrelated. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. There comes a time when silence is betrayal. There is no gain without struggle. The quality, not the longevity, of one's life is what is important. There is nothing more tragic than to find an individual bogged down in the length of life, devoid of breath. An individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. Our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power. We have guided missiles and misguided men. A genuine leader is not a searcher for consensus but a molder of consensus. The function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Rarely do we find men who willingly engage in hard, solid thinking. There is an almost universal quest for easy answers and half-baked solutions. Nothing pains some people more than having to think. If we are not careful, our colleges will produce a group of close-minded, unscientific, illogical propagandists, consumed with immoral acts. Be careful, brethren, be careful, teachers. The Negro needs the white man to free him from his fears. The white man needs the Negro to free him from his guilt. The soft-minded man always fears change. He feels security in the status quo, and he has an almost morbid fear of the new. For him, the greatest pain is the pain of a new idea. People fail to get along because they fear each other, they fear each other because they don't know each other, they don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. True peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. It is not enough to say we must not wage war. It is necessary to love peace and sacrifice for it. We must concentrate not merely on the negative expulsion of war but the positive affirmation of peace. Peace is not merely a distant goal that we seek, but a means by which we arrive at that goal. Nonviolence means avoiding not only external physical violence but also internal violence of spirit. You not only refuse to shoot a man, but you refuse to hate him. The principle of self-defense, even involving weapons and bloodshed, has never been condemned, even by Gandhi. We who engage in non-violent direct action are not the creators of tension. We merely bring to the surface the hidden tension that is already alive. If I wish to compose or write or pray or preach well, I must be angry. Then all the blood in my veins is stirred, and my understanding is sharpened. Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it because it is right.